everyone, I'm Angie Kellen, and we're here at CES 2023 in Las Vegas. I'm at the Visa Demo Suite, and joining me from Visa is Jim Cho. How are you? Good, how are you? Let's start off by explaining what Visa is as an organization. Visa is the Video Electronic Standards Association, which is a trade organization that develops video electronic standards, like DisplayPort, uh, ClearMR, Adaptive Sync, etc. Uh, it's like over 300 companies in the uh, technology industry that develop video standards for sources, for sinks, displays, cables, etc. And what is your role there? I'm the compliance program manager, so my main role is to uh, manage the compliance test labs, the compliance test specification development, and the certification and logo uh, testing that we do for certification of all the Visa developed products. Wonderful. So let's start off. What do we have here? We're looking at the world's first uh, DisplayPort 2.1 interoperability and gaming demo using the latest AMD GPU and the Samsung AK2K 240Hz display. Additionally, we're showing a performance of 13.5 gigabits per second between the source and the sink through a DP80 cable. Uh, so four lanes, 13.5 gig, gives you 54 gigabits total uh, throughput. So uh, additionally to the uh, interoperability uh, demonstration, it's the first uh, commercially available uh, DisplayPort 2.1 demo, one of the three speeds that was introduced in the DisplayPort 2.1. So you had 10 gigabits per second per lane, 13.5 gigabits per second per lane, and 20 gigabits per second per lane. So Jim, what's Visa's role in this gaming demo? Visa uh, writes all the compliance test specifications, all the standards. It's a consortium of technology companies that develop the specifications to make end-to-end -end interoperability possible uh, for new uh, interface standards. We create the compliance test programs that certify these devices to ensure that end users have a good interoperability experience. So if you buy a system like this that has a certified GPU in it, a display like this that's certified by VESA through test labs or self-testers, and cables, DP40 or DP80 certified cables, uh, then the user, end user just plugs it in and it will work. Jim, you mentioned that this is the first gaming demo with DisplayPort 2.1 certified products. So how does this DisplayPort 2.1 compare with the previous generation specs? DisplayPort 2.1 has been in the works for a couple years now, and it introduced three new data rates, uh, 10 gigabits per second per lane, 13 and a half gigabits per second per lane, and 20 gigabits per second per lane, in addition to many other uh, new improvements and features over the previous version, DisplayPort 2.0, and then before that, DisplayPort 1.4. But the key improvements for DisplayPort 2.1 are the new data rates and new bit encoding to make it more efficient, which allows you to drive 8K 2K 240 hertz through a single cable. Jim, how do you get new hardware for a new spec to work? That's a good question. It takes a lot of work from all the member companies. We have events like plug tests where we get a bunch of people together with all these new products and you run around and you test stuff, you plug it in, you make sure it works uh, and then you do the same thing with end products. They submit them to test labs. Test labs go through a very rigorous set of testing requirements and st standards testing with equipment and other interoperable uh, products to verify that these things work when they're hitting the market and the end user tries to plug them all together themselves. Joining me is Roland Wooster. Hello, Roland. Hi, nice to meet you. Roland, let's start off with what your role is at Visa. So I have two roles at Visa. One is the uh, the marketing work group. I, I help run that group. And, and then I chair a uh, technical standards group, the display performance metrics work group that is responsible for all of the front of screen performance standards, logo programs. And, and so you may have seen display HDR, Adaptive Sync Display and Clear MR. Those are three of the standards that we've launched so far. That's fantastic. Well, since we're in the Visa Demo Suite, why don't we see what you have going on behind us here? Absolutely. So I'm really excited about this demo. This is Intel's newest 13th generation Raptor Lake mobile processor that we launched this week at CES. This is inside a Dell 5000 Latitude series chassis. 
This is an experimental configuration. And connected to it, we have a Synaptics VMM9430 video hub. This is, I believe, the world's first demonstration of UHBR20 four lane driving DP80 video signal on this, this white cable here into the hub and connected from the hub, which actually connects the four displays. We have three displays here connected at 4K 144 all driven from this single cable from the GPU. Roland, when would something like this be available, like say if I wanted to purchase it? So I think the schedule is, it's undefined and it's up to the ecosystem. Uh, like I said, this is 13th generation Raptor Lake silicon. This is the finished silicon. Um, so you know, from an Intel perspective, we've got the capability to drive this. It's a question of, the ecosystem readiness, when the OEMs are ready to deploy this, when the monitors have this technology, when the hubs are ready, I think that's when it will be fully available for consumers. Synaptics has their hub. They have plans to bring that to market in the fourth quarter of this year. Um, so, you know, people are moving forwards with this at this point in time. So Roland, we're moving on to the next demo. So I see that we have the Display HDR logo, and can you tell me about the program and who all is involved in it? Yeah, so the program is the first logo and standards program that we developed as part of the Performance Metrics work group. And this was something we launched at CES in 2018. So we're five years on. We have over a thousand certified products now from practically everybody in the display industry. We have all of the TCON, the Scalar, the panel manufacturers, the ODMs, the OEMs. Practically everybody is involved and we have a, a tremendous wealth of products now. Well, Roland, looking at all these monitors outside of size, what's different about them? Yeah, so this is your traditional SDR display. And this is what most people have. Now, maybe you have a slightly larger SDR display, but you can see that the, the contrast ratio is not great. Compared to these other displays, that's gonna be your primary difference with SDR versus HDR, is the contrast ratio is lower. It looks washed out by comparison. The colors are much more muted. The highlights, it doesn't represent the highlights and the specular uh, reflections that you see the, in real life that on these displays, they do a far, far better, far superior job of representing specular highlights and reflections and make it look much more realistic. And so we have a number of standards uh, up from, from a 400 level up to 1400 level within the program. So Roland, if I was to be a consumer and wanting to buy one of these, which one would be appropriate for me? It would depend a lot on what your application is. Uh, if you were a gamer, I would suggest the 600 level is a great level to start looking at. Um, it, it, it provides local dimming. It has a fantastic color gamut. It's got 600 nits of luminance, which will be a lot more than your SDR display. It's a, it's a good price point, and I, I would say it's the perfect place for a gamer to start looking. If you're a content creator, and particularly if you're doing content creation, video, content creation. I would say as a consumer, you should start looking at the 1000 level. Uh, it's a, there is a price premium, but if you are doing video content creation, you have to grade HDR video content at a thousand nits. And if you don't have a thousand nit display, how are you going to do it? You're going to be grading blind. And the 1400 level, that's a professional level. If, if, if the, the costs are significantly higher, but it is a outstanding level of performance and almost no content that you throw at it will push the monitor to its limits. And it's a, it's a fantastic, and the color gamma is greater as well in the 1400 tier. So really supreme solution for content creation. So Roland, what do we have here? This looks like a gamer's heaven. I only wish that our viewers could see it as you're sitting in front of it right now. It's really immersive. So. The reason you won't be able to see how great these look on the, on the video is because these are OLED displays and it's going to be very difficult to capture a video of an OLED display and display it on 
anything that's going to represent what this really looks like. So these are two of the very best products in uh, heading to market and in market today. This is a, a, a very high performance LG OLED display and this is an MSI laptop. Let me talk about the standards that VESA has established that these companies have adopted to demonstrate and very clearly articulate to consumers how fantastic these displays are. We launched two new standards in 2022 for front of screen display performance. One was the adaptive sync display standard. And this is related to displays that can vary their frame rate. Now that's very useful for when you want to play a movie and you want to play the movie at a specific frame rate. Hollywood operates at 24, televisions at 30 or 60, consumer content at 60. And of course games, they have an adaptive frame rate based on the GPU's performance and the content. And so the frame rate is always varying. And the VESA Adaptive Sync protocol is designed to accommodate this. And so we built the Adaptive Sync display logo for displays that are certified to meet a certain jitter and flicker set of requirements in our standards throughout their video frame rate across any GPU that supports VESA standards and all meet that consistent performance that VESA has certified. And that's the Adaptive Sync display logo program that we have built in VESA. So very pleased to show that this monitor is operating at the Adaptive Sync 240, so 240 hertz. This laptop also has the Adaptive Sync 240 standard as well. In addition, to the Adaptive Sync standard that we launched. We launched the Clear MR, the Clear Motion Ratio standard. And both of these displays have also been certified for the Clear MR standard. Let me start with the laptop. This is the highest certified laptop using the Clear MR 9000 level. And that's the highest level we have for a certification for laptops today. Um, and the clear MR of 9000, what that means is the 9000 is a percentage of clear pixels to blurry pixels. So it means for every 90 clear pixels, there is only at most one blurry pixel. And so if you have motion like these games, you see a lot of lateral movement left and right. And so every time those trees are moving on a, on a blurry monitor, those those trees will smear across the screen. Whereas a, a display that's been certified with clear MR, you know that you've only got one blurry pixel for every 90 on a device such as this laptop that is certified for the clear MR 9000. What's incredibly special about this display, however, is this has our newest 13,000 Clear MR standard. This is the highest performing display that we've certified. We only launched the 13,000 tier this week for CES. And this monitor is a showcase example of our highest performing Clear MR sample. Well, CES is over, and we all learned how exciting standards can be. So Thanks to Visa, we look forward to all the innovations coming out this year and what they're going to bring to CES next year. See you next time.